Hi, everybody. It's DJ Nikki. You're listening to 107.3 FM. We're here for your weekly news wrap up sponsored by ElwoodCity.org. However, we have a change. We warned you guys about it for the last couple of weeks. We have to say goodbye to Jonathan Cortez. He has moved on to bigger and better things, but he has a beautiful replacement. We have Cassie with us once again. Cassie, how are you doing? I'm really good, Nikki. How you're are you? You're settling into the new job? Yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. That's good. So um, I warned you last week. I said, make sure that you bring stuff to talk about. <laughs> because when we first started doing the show, when I first started working with Jonathan, our shows were like five minutes long. It was it was like a quick snippet. And then, uh, you know, he got a little push from ElwoodCity.org to make them a little longer. So we want to make sure that we have stuff to talk about. But I think it's going to be easier because we're girls. Absolutely. I mean, we could talk about nearly nothing for yeah. a half hour. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Absolutely. So what's, what story would you like to kick off with this week? Well, um, I guess I'll go with what happened earlier in the week. Okay. And um, I went to the council meeting on Monday and nothing too exciting happened. They just did their voting on you know their agendas. But there was one cool thing, I guess, that was brought up. And a former council member, mm-hmm. Ralph Cipetta, he um, basically just brought it to council's attention that there's a water treatment replacement that's supposed to be going on and he had some concerns regarding it because it's going to take out where people in Elwood are currently getting their water from which is the Slippery Rock River is it the river creek well I think around here we call it Slippery Rock Creek I mean unless you're really from around here then you call it a creek okay the Slippery <laughs> Rock Creek then right um is where the majority of people in Elwood get their water from. But with the new water treatment plant, it's going to be getting water from the Conequinesa and Beaver River. And people are concerned because it's not the cleanest waterway. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've been reading about it uh, a lot lately because we actually, we just met a group of people at one of the community events that we did. And they were part of the 50 annual Conequinesa and cleanup hosted by the Allegheny Aquatic Alliance. And uh, I guess I never realized how bad the Conakinesson was and until I talked to them and uh, she handed me this brochure and I was amazed when I read it because they've only been doing it for four years and in four years they've removed over 200,000 pounds of garbage and over 2,000 tires and I just like I don't know I grew up around here and I never really thought that it was that nasty I know think of all the people that like went swimming in that I still swim in it what are you talking about yeah there you go (laughs) I was just out of Little Falls last week. I know. It's quite sad, honestly. Yeah. And, you know, I remember when I was a kid, my dad was talking about how he didn't trust eating the fish that came out of the Klondikinesson. And I never realized why. But back then, it's because a lot of people didn't have proper sewage run into the lines. And a lot of people, they had runoff and stuff. But since then, the townships like uh, North Wickley Township, they've all mandatory. Everybody had to have new sewage lines and everything put in so that there's no kind of contamination or runoff in the soil. So I just kind of assumed that, you know, over that 20 year process, everything was cleaned up. And I didn't realize how much garbage and tires were actually being dumped into the creek. But they, um, they're having two cleanups this year. They're having one on August 27th and they're having another one on September 10th. So they said that in the last couple of years, they've had over 600 volunteers who, sh- who show up to help clean up. Is that all together, like per cleanup? You know, I'm not sure. Um, but I know that they said that the stretch of that waterway that, that they're cleaning up is mm-hmm. 50 miles long. And in the four years, they've managed to clean up um, I want to say 30 or 40 miles of that. So they only have like 10 or 20 more miles to go for the cleanup. And I know this year the cleanup's going all the way from Harmony down to McKim Way, which is right out in Franklin Township. So they, the cleanup has been pretty extensive. They said that the 2016 cleanup, this, this stretch for this year will be 10 miles long. So it's not as long as it has been then? I'm guessing that if they've done... You know, if they've done, well, yeah, it's about the same. If they've done 40 miles in four years, they do about 10 miles each each oh, time they do it. Oh, I thought, I don't know why, but I thought you meant like they did 40 miles like a year. No, I think it's total that since they started, they've, they've cleaned up right. 40 miles. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that was pretty exciting um, to hear about all the good stuff that they're doing. And they're a nonprofit organization. I mean, they're just dedicated to just, you know, clean up the environment and clean up the waterways and keeping everything beautiful and clean so I was real excited to meet them 
And they said that uh, the watershed population for this area, it's 185,000. It runs through 12 municipalities. I hate saying that word. Municipalities. There we go. I said it right. (laughs) And it runs through uh, Butler, Beaver, and Lawrence County. So um, the cleanup is amazing. So I I would encourage anybody out there, if uh, if you were at the council meeting and you're concerned about Elwood City getting its water from the Conaconesson, then, you know, do your part and join in the cleanup. It's going to be August 27th, and there's going to be another one on September 10th. And uh, what they're doing is they're meeting up in Harmony, right off of 588, where Vecca is. Across the street is a church. And I can't remember for the life of me what the name of that church is right now. It's something like Live Word or Live Long or something. (laughs) It has the word live or live, because you know you don't know how to pronounce it unless you see it in context. So, but I know that it's right across the street from Vecca, which is on 588 up in Harmony, Zillianople area. So I guess everybody's meeting there at eight o'clock in the morning and they have some people that are going to be rafting down and cleaning as they're rafting down. And then they have like 12 other put in locations where people can go and, you know, get the garbage and everything that's being collected and get it out of there. I kind of feel like it would be good exercise to do that. You know, like, have you ever been canoeing or right. kayaking? Right, yeah. And then plus you're pulling stuff out of the river. That would be awesome. Yeah, I know that. Um, exercising. The other day when we were down at Little Falls, we found these things in the water. And we're just so curious, just dying to know what they are. They look like sharpening stones. And they're, like, so heavy. They're really big. And they feel like stone, like concrete. Mm-hmm. But if you break them, they have metal rings inside the stone you can't see the metal rings unless you we found one that was like halfway broken so we broke it the rest of the way these metal rings and for the life of me we don't know what they are but we found like 12 of them down there is it man-made yeah okay yeah they're definitely man-made we asked a couple people that were down there like hey what do you think these are and you know somebody said maybe they were some kind of fittings for an old mill somebody said maybe they were sharpening stones you know Somebody else said maybe it was the first wheel ever made. I'm like, no, because when you break them open, they have fabricated metal rings yeah. inside them. But a bunch of people were just cleaning them up and they were making like burn pits and stuff down there. And somebody put like a grate and they made a grill out of it. And I was like, well, that's cool. We'll pull it all out of the creek so it's not in there and then we'll put it to good use. So we're still kind of trying to figure out what they were. But it's it's nice to know that you know, especially nonprofit organizations who are doing this cleanup, you know, like whole communities benefit from that. You know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It is definitely good to know that, like, people care about the environment still because right. it seems like so many people don't care. Yeah. And, and that's definitely something that we need. You know, we need the community. It to reminds care. me of a Facebook video that I saw one time with this little boy who was like five years old bawling in his mom's car about how people were poisoning the earth and it was killing the the little animals and he was so angry. Aww. And it was so cute though because he was like five so he couldn't swear and he was like, they're just big dummy heads, you know, and he was so mad. And then he kept saying, I can't wait until I grow up because then I'm gonna take care of the earth. And his mom was like, well, you can take care of it now. And so she took him to this state park that was near their house and she showed him how just cleaning up the garbage, even himself, was saving these little animals. And Aww, that's he, he thought that he was you know captain america at that point at that point you know he was on cloud nine so they interviewed him like on the ellen DeGeneres show and she told him how he was a little hero and he was the little animal rights activist and this environmentalist and he just like too many big words for his for him to even you know soak it all in he just was so excited that's so cute and i'm the same way with my kids though If I take my kids to a state park, especially if it has like a swimming area, I make my kids get a bag and clean up all the garbage along the beaches. And a state game warden had walked up on us one night when we were doing that. And she was like, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, I want my kids to clean up the whole whole beach. And she was like, why? And I'm like, why do you have your job if you have to ask me why? Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, this is a nice area. And obviously there have been people here that didn't care. And my kids should learn that places like this need to be kept clean, even if it means you do it yourself. Yeah. And she was just blown away. And then she was like, wow, I mean, thanks. <laughs> you know? But I don't know. Sometimes people look at us weird whenever we do that because we, we're cleaning up other people's garbage. But somebody's got to do it. Absolutely. <laughs> so anyway, so there were some concerns about uh, whether our water is going to be coming from the Conaconesson, but hopefully it eases a couple minds to know that there are people out there working to clean that up. So what else you got going on over there at elwoodcity.org this week? Um, 
Well, there were a couple of interesting police reports this, okay. this week. Um, I don't know if you remember, like, a couple months back, there was a guy that threatened his whole family with a knife. I don't. I tend not to, uh, I, don't, I tend not to read too much news. I usually get it all from uh, you guys. <laughs> well, it was on our site. We actually reported about it. but Jonathan um, and I must not have talked about it. Maybe not, yeah. but... Yeah, the, the same guy uh, ended up threatening his brother this time with a knife, and then whenever police arrived at the scene, he he had already, like, fled. So police were looking for him, and they saw him about, like, 25 yards away um, behind one of the buildings in Elwood. And so they ordered him to get on the ground, but he didn't, and he continued to, like, just run. Like, he stopped, and they confronted him, and then he just took off running. So they released the police dog after him, but the police dog didn't even catch him either because wow, because um, he ran through yards that had other domestic dogs. So, oh. so the police dog, I guess, for some reason, either got distracted or was told to come back because of the other dogs. I have no idea, really. Oh, okay. I just know that he ran from the police dog. And, and they weren't able to apprehend him? No. Oh, okay. Anything else you got for our police reports? Yes, and the other one was that a woman left her baby in a stroller um, while she was being interviewed by the police because she stole from the Dollar General store, which she's already banned from, from like because she stole from there before. Now, are we talking about the Dollar General on Lawrence Avenue or the Dollar General in Franklin Plaza? Lawrence. Okay. Yeah, it was the one in Lawrence. And she she like left the store and police confronted her there. But while he, while she was talking to the police officers, um, she kept looking like behind her and towards like her apartment building apparently and saying like, I need to check on my baby. And the police asked her like, where's your baby? And she said, well, my friend's watching it. So they continued on with you know their interview with her, whatever you want to call it. And then, you know, they realized that she had lied about where her baby was at because they reviewed the surveillance tape and she had her baby in the store with her. Um, oh. And she was putting the stolen items in the stroller, but she didn't have the stroller or the baby with her whenever the police were talking to her. So they went back to her and, you know, they asked her again, like, where the baby was, and she said that it was behind a bush. Um, and that was her attempt to try and hide the stroller with the stolen items. But the thing is, like, it was like a 90 degree day when she did this. Oh, my. So she left the baby out for, like, I'm not exactly sure how long it was, but in, right. in 90 degree heat. And the cops immediately, you know, found the child and took it to a cruiser in the AC, which was separate to the one that she was in. And, now, um, are the police going to file child endangerment charges or anything yeah, like that? They, yeah. yeah, they're filing child endangerment charges for that, okay. as long as other things, because she's still... Right. So, but it's good to know that she is going to get in trouble for doing that. Yeah, that's it's no joke. I mean, you know, leaving your kids or your pets, you know, just in the heat, it's irresponsible. Absolutely. It's horrible. So what else do you got going on for us? That's a good question because there wasn't really a whole lot of news this week, but... Well, sometimes sometimes the Jonathan and I, we would run into the same issue, and we would always tell everybody that no news is good news. Yeah. Because if there's not a lot to talk about, then it means there's peace and harmony in Elwood City. I don't really know that that's all <laughs> completely true, but it sounded good. Yeah. <laughs> You're right about that. To wrap things up, yesterday was Elwood City's media day, so everyone can look forward to our interviews that we did with the senior players of some of the teams, the fall sports teams. Okay. Um, those will be posted over the next week or two. And okay. also Panther Night was last night for Riverside. So we have a small gallery up on our site of pictures from that. You know. Yeah, you guys were busy last night because we had somebody from ElwoodCity.org over here last night too. We had Shannon over here taking pictures because WXED had a community concert and we had Tarach and Sky did an acoustic concert for us and she was over here for a little while taking pictures and stuff. Oh, right. Yeah, you know, we saw her over at the tennis sports as yeah, well. Yeah, she had told yeah. me she had just left there. And then uh, coming up this week on Thursday, WXED is having uh, a free movie night. It's kind of like a drive-in feel because we projected up onto the side of the building 
building and everybody just kind of brings their chairs and their blankets and their towels and oh that's awesome yeah we all hang out in the parking lot we watch a movie this week we're showing um the new movie with jennifer gardner called miracles from heaven and we're gonna have uh popcorn a big concession table set up and we're gonna do uh they're called rippers it's a deep fried hot dog it's amazing because it's a hot dog that tastes like it has bacon on it because it's oh, so really good. yeah oh that sounds good it's like it's like it's like my specialty at all of our events wow that sounds and delicious it's a shame that wxcd kind of got into the community day thing late in the summer because we're having so much fun with it that i wish we just started doing it even earlier and it's nice too because we also have a new company turn four toilets um uh, from the uh, schaefer racing family i'm friends with them and they just acquired this new portable john business and so they actually donate clean porta potties for all of our events and he's so nice about it because they come down and they they clean them the day of our events so that they're mm -hmm. always really clean and we've had such a good response i just wish that we had started doing it earlier in the summer because we try to alternate what we do is we'll do like a movie night on one Thursday and then the next Thursday will be some kind of music event where we will either have a band or something like that. I know that September 8th coming up, we're having an outdoor parking lot dance party. So hopefully ElwoodCity.org can send over somebody to take pictures of that because I think yeah, that that would be, be cool. makes awesome pictures, see a community dance party. So I'm excited about all that. Fun. Yeah, you'll definitely have to keep us updated on that. And yeah. Uh, Definitely. Yeah. And I mean, any event that you guys can make it over for just to hang out and have fun would be great. Heck like, yeah. We had a concert last night, and Tarachin's guy was awesome because, you know, they're kind of like known for being like a rock band, and their drummer was actually out of town, so they did an acoustic set for us. And I never pictured how good it would be to hear Tarachin's guy do acoustic music. It was phenomenal. So I finally had talked them into, they're getting ready to release their second album. I talked them into making a new album. They're going to make an acoustic album and oh, release that's it. cool. Yeah, that's I was really excited neat. about it. It was such a good time. But anyway, if that's all the news that we have for this week, then I guess that's a wrap. Sounds good to me. Thanks for having me on here, Nikki. And all I look right. forward to seeing you next week. I will see you next week. That was your weekly news wrap up here on WXED 107.3 FM, The Moose.